David Niven was a popular character actor that audiences will perhaps best remember for his time playing Sir Charles Lytton in the Pink Panther film series. Shortly before the actor's death, he was hospitalised for a period of 10 days. However, the name that he was hospitalised under wasn't his own. Join Facts First as we explore how David Niven was hospitalised under a false name before his death. David Niven tried to hide his failing health. As the 1980s came around, friends and fans of the popular character actor David Niven began noticing some troubling signs. The actor was a familiar presence on talk shows, though some of his recent appearances had shown him behaving in a way that was out of character. The actor was known for being a great storyteller, and he always had something interesting to say during his late night talk show appearances. However, during the actor's last few appearances on late night television before his death, it was obvious that something was wrong with him. Fans that tuned into David Niven's appearances on the late night shows hosted by such figures as Merv Griffin and Michael Parkinson in 1981 were quick to point out that it appeared as if the actor's health was failing. Some suggested that they thought the actor had suffered from a stroke, while others suggested that the star had been drinking. It got to the point where the rumours were so persistent that David had to say something. According to the late actor himself, he had been merely suffering fatigue as a result of him filming his latest movie. David had been filming the 1983 comedy Better Late Than Never, in which he featured alongside fellow stars Maggie Smith and Art Carney. The film was released in the USA in April of 1983, just months before David Niven's death in July of that year. The movie wouldn't find its premiere in the United Kingdom until December when it debuted on television. David blamed his poor health on his final film roles. David Niven's very final appearance on the screen came via Curse of the Pink Panther. The film premiered in the USA in April of 1983 before coming to the United Kingdom in November. Of course, by the time the film was released in November, David had already tragically passed. Curse of the Pink Panther was a very much maligned entry in the film series, as it was the first not to feature Peter Sellers in the lead role. Though David Niven blamed his poor appearance in the early 1980s on his extravagant filming schedule, he was soon diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is a neurodegenerative disease. This was towards the end of 1981, and David would continue trying his best to keep up appearances until his death just a year and a half later. However, by the time the year of his death came around, David hadn't been seen or heard from publicly in a while. In February of 1983, David Niven was hospitalised for a period of 10 days as a result of a digestive problem. During this period of hospitalisation, David used a false name because he didn't want the public to know how quickly his health was declining. Though David was eventually let go from the hospital, it was against the doctor's orders. Many of David's close friends would encourage him to return to the hospital in the months leading up to his death, though the actor would refuse. David's family supported his decision. David Niven Jr. witnessed his father's failing health. David Niven ended up passing away on July 29, 1983, from complications related to his amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. The death was presided over by the actor's next of kin, including son David Niven Jr. According to David Jr., it was heartbreaking to see his father lose his battle with the fatal condition. His father had once been a strong and commanding presence, but his muscular frame had been reduced to almost nothing as a result of his lack of eating. David Jr. says that his father not only had to be fed food during his final months, but that he had to have his throat massaged so that the food would go down. This resulted in his father's weight reducing significantly. Though this physical transformation was disturbing, David claims that the worst part about being around his father in the months leading up to his death was the fact that he could barely communicate. The trouble that David Niven was having with his words during his 1981 talk show appearances had worsened considerably by 1983, to the point where only a small fraction of what the actor was attempting to say made sense. Though David Jr. couldn't always understand his father, he could tell that he was getting frustrated. David Niven didn't take his diagnosis of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ASL, lying down. Instead, he did his best to both keep up appearances and attempt behind closed doors to fix the problem. David sought out cures from all over the world, using his actor money to try out anything that he could find in an effort to cure his ailment. 
Sadly, nothing worked. Shockingly, just before David Niven's death, the actor was said to have called upon a supposed close friend to come over to his place of rest so that he could make several shocking confessions. Though David Niven Jr. contests this story, others believe it. David Niven allegedly made some deathbed confessions. Later in David Niven's life, the actor apparently became friends with a biographer by the name of Michael Munn. Michael seems to have interviewed David several times over the course of his life, though how close the two were as friends is debatable. Another debatable aspect of their friendship is whether or not David Niven actually made the deathbed confessions to Michael Munn that the biographer claimed he did. According to Michael Munn, David Niven called him up on the phone as he was lying on his deathbed and demanded that the biographer come out to visit him. Munn was quick to take the opportunity to hear the dying David Niven's deathbed confessions, and he was soon at the actor's bedside. The actor then had many shocking confessions to give, including the fact that he had been rampantly unfaithful to his two wives, as well as the fact that he had attempted suicide after the death of his first. If Michael Munn is to be believed, the reason that David Niven wanted to make these confessions to him was that he was a Mormon priest. Michael has claimed that David viewed him as a man of God, and that David was adamant in his desire to make a confession to such a man before his death. David Niven Jr. claims that his father knew plenty of men of God, and that he and Michael Munn were not nearly as close as the biographer claims. David Niven Jr. also doubts that David Niven would have been in either the mental or geographical place that Michael claims that he was in during the supposed interview. Still, there are others who seem to suggest that the biographer Michael Munn is telling the truth. The Many Scandalous Confessions of David Niven Michael Munn claims that David Niven summoned him to a flat in London in late 1982. However, David Niven Jr. claims that he believed his father to be in Switzerland at the time. Besides this discrepancy in location, David Niven Jr. also seems to be upset at the notion that his father would have made a confession to anyone but him. The first confession that David Niven allegedly made to Michael Munn was that he was an illegitimate child. According to Michael Munn, the man that was officially believed to be David's father wasn't actually his father at all. For his part, David Niven Jr. claims that there is no way that this is possible, because both he, his father, and the man that continues to be widely recognised as his grandfather all look relatively alike. The next confession that David supposedly made relates to his first wife, who was David Niven Jr.'s mother. That wife was Primula Rollo, who passed away in a tragic accident when David Jr. was only three years old. The accident occurred at a Hollywood party that was being thrown by actor Tyrone Power. The attendees at the party were playing a game that required them to hide from one another, and Primula excitedly opened the door that she believed to house a cupboard, but that actually housed a flight of stairs. The woman then fell down the stairs to her death. Michael Munn claims that David Niven told him on his deathbed that he attempted suicide as a result of the guilt of losing his wife in such a tragic way. David Niven allegedly put a gun into his mouth and tried to fire it only for the gun to jam. This resulted in David's life being saved. This account is another story that David Niven Jr. is incredibly sceptical of, with him claiming that there was no way that his father would ever attempt suicide in this way and then fail. David Niven eventually remarried after his first wife's death, though his second marriage wasn't a happy one. His second wife was a Swedish model named Hjordis Tasmirden and the two tied the knot in 1948. Despite the fact that pretty much everyone claims that the two were never happy together, they remained married until David's death in 1983. Hjordis drank a lot and was unable to conceive, so she and David adopted two daughters during their marriage. Michael Munn says that David Niven told him before his death that one of these daughters was actually his illegitimate love child with a teenage girl. While David Niven Jr. agrees that his father was miserable in his second marriage and cheated on his stepmother numerous times, he says there was no way Hjordis would have raised a child that wasn't hers. Though celebrity biographer Michael Munn claims that David Niven made several scandalous confessions to him on his deathbed, David Niven Jr. isn't so sure. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that a biographer claims that one of David Niven's adopted daughters was actually his illegitimate love child from an affair with a teenage girl, and that the actor lied about his worsening health in his final years? As always, like this video to show your support, and subscribe and hit the notification bell 
if you'd like to be among the first to know when more Facts First videos are on their way.